Hello. Lately it came to my attention that many people uh, consider it important to have non-contact voltage on a measurement gear like a multimeter or uh, something else like a current clamp. Uh, that they even consider not buying the thing if it doesn't have the feature. Let me tell you why I completely disagree and I rather take devices that not have this feature. This is a corner on my desktop. I arranged here a couple of measurement equipment and even some small Chinese one to have a comparison. And what you see here is an anchor USB charger. Your standard switching power supply giving output voltage of 5 volts and with a power delivery or quick charge or whatever it can even give you uh, higher voltages but nothing near mains voltage. So why should this be an issue for non-contact voltage? Let me explain. Let's take for example here this one, put it to VoltSeq which uh, they call non-contact voltage here on this device. Um, low sensitivity, let's start with low sensitivity or low fields. Uh, oh, did you hear that? Clearly a reading. What have we here? Let's switch it to high. Try again. Oh god damn it. Is there mains voltage on my USB power supply? Can't be. Let's get a non-contact confirmation reading here. Ah damn it, inverted LCD. Electric field. Oh god damn it. Live wire. Ah, maybe they can't be trusted. Let's try the Priman. What does the Priman say about my dangerous supply over here? Let's go to electric field. Oh, I can't even get near it. Uh, low, nothing. You see, it's just the USB cables. Mm. Should I touch them? Should I maybe cut them a shut off? Should I touch them? Uh, looks dangerous. Can I take the risk? Uh, nothing. Hmm. Maybe the thing is broken somehow. Let's try another one. See here. Other one. Let's try it out. Uh, maybe it doesn't read main voltage. Let's let's see mains voltage here. Mm, nothing here weird. It's definitely plugged in. Oh, I have to switch it to electric field. Nothing. Ah, here. Okay. So this seems to be plugged in. What's about the USB here? Oh. Again. Let's try another one. This one here. Voltseek again. Uh, nothing here. Strange. I would expect this cable to handle 240 volts somehow. Uh, I. Ah. Ah. Yes. Yes. Let's try it on the USB. Oh. Seems dangerous, doesn't it? Okay, why does this happen? Well, non-contact voltage is a very nice gimmick, but not much more, unless you're in electrical engineering or if you're doing some electrical installation, then it comes in handy, but never to check if there is live voltage or not. You know what? It's a, it's a shortcut to get you into hospital. Non-contact voltage detection. K 
cannot really be reliably used on anything because it's merely an antenna that can uh, receive electrical fields, filter them to get out 50 and 60 hertz signals, and then weigh them based on some algorithms. It can be fooled because this switching power supply it has a couple of thousand volts on its surface, but the moment I touch it, the voltage is gone. But not to this kind of a device. This happens usually with all the supplies and for the non-contact voltage. It's virtually impossible to distinguish it. And then why didn't it detect this cable here? Easy. Usually, in this kind of a connection, you have two or three wires and at least one of them, unless you're in some sort of a hospital or other insulated environment, at least one of them is connected to ground. It's a protective earth. And if the protective earth is right in front of the live wire that the non-contact voltage wants to detect, it just blocks the signal. So you have seen it is not really reliable. Why would I have it on a meter? Of course, it might be a nice add-on. But one obvious side effect is that when you have a shielded meter, you you know you know how this primer looks in the inside. Very nice shielding, but not right here. You don't want to have shielding around your antenna, obviously. So, what to use instead? Something like this. It's not so difficult. There are optimized tools. Why is this so different from a multimeter? Why not just check with a multimeter if there is dangerous voltage or not? First of all, you see how many buttons this thing has? It's very easy to configure it wrong. To have a filter on. To have it set to DC while you try to find out if there is AC. To do all kind of weird things, the batteries can run out. You try to do something, batteries run out, and then you just guess, ah, save. I, I switched it off. It's gonna be okay. This thing here. Two pro voltage tester, available in all shapes and sizes. Different functions. I have here a very popular brand in Germany. Um, it has one job. It tells you, is it safe to touch? or not. It works with batteries, it works without batteries. It has a redundant circuitry that it can tell me if there is live voltage even if it is uh, damaged inside. I've seen them working in harsh conditions, I've seen them working even, even after years and years of usage. This thing always works reliably. It has non-contact voltage. But what is a good use for non-contact voltage? For example, just imagine you have an electrical installation, um, a tons of circuits, not, not, not uncommon to have a home where you have like, I don't know, 15, 20 different electrical circuits. And a thick mass of cables comes out of a wall in the basement and, and, and leaves in the other wall. And you want to set the junction point of one of them how to find out what cable is what. Ob obviously, quite frequently, it's not properly labeled. So there is no means to distinguish like 20 gray cables. That is where non-contact voltage is really useful. You switch all the circuits off, just the one you want to find on, and then you probe them one after the other and mark the one with the highest signal. You can use this for, for it. I think this one detects the... Yeah, see? The orange blinking? Very dangerous USB cable here. Uh, by the way, it is, uh, you, could, you could point out, okay, my, my desk is somehow the problem. I've observed this in, in many different locations in the lab. There is obviously always some, some place where the, the non-contact voltage works better, some place where it works worse but that just means to me I cannot trust it really. Well, no, 
with the bunch of cables. Now you can mark the cable that you want to find. And then you make a confirmation reading, switching everything else on, leaving the, the, the circuit you want to find off, checking again if the cable is the only one that it's off. You found your cable, switch everything off, install the junction, everything nice. That is a good use case, finding out if there is live voltage. Rather use this device. You know, this has these features as well, but as an add-on. Not as its primary function. This even has capacitive uh, capacitive phase testing. See, I have some testing socket here. I put it in, immediately red. I put in the other test lead. See, this is some straight reading. Nothing to understand wrong here. Works without batteries works even under harsh conditions. You can trust something like this. You cannot trust something like this if you want to know if you can touch a wire. So non-contact voltage in a multimeter is quite a bad idea. I recommend you not do it. And it is even getting worse. You know, um, it's fine-tuned. Now imagine you're in, in the industry, because obviously maybe it's an industry feature. Let's say we have a thousand volts. Can it, can it find that? Let's find out. This is just, you know, an insulation tester. Nothing fancy about it. You can use it to check if there is some insulation failure somewhere. Let me plug it in. So oh, obviously I want to see DC voltage. You see it outputs here a thousand volts DC. And this tells me that the input resistance of this multimeter is about 10 mega ohms. So nice and fancy. A thousand volts, but if I would touch it, it would obviously be not very nice, I would feel it, but it wouldn't kill me. The energy is limited that this thing can put out. You see, it's even giving me an indication, but this indication can't be trusted because the indication is off once the batteries run out. So, let's see what non-contact non voltage tells me about these thousand volts here. Uh, turn this gimmick on. Mm. Gives me some reading. thousand volts. Doesn't seem too bad. Only a thousand volts. Nothing to worry about. I'm not going to touch it obviously, but can't detect it. Let's try this one out. Hmm. No problemo. No dangerous voltage levels here. Let's try this one. Hmm. How dangerous am I? So it's quite sensitive to interference. Shut up. So let me conclude it. I recommend you use proper gear 
but only if you have the right training and experience with it and you know what you're doing and you're licensed to do it and you don't trust any non-contact voltage with your life and don't poke around in mains voltage using some Shenzhen gimmicks. Otherwise your cat will probably need a new can opener sooner or later. <laughs>